What's up and welcome back. We're doing a laptop cooler comparison video. We've got four different laptop coolers here and one of them costs $12, $12.99. The other one costs $88.99. So $89 is gonna be a full spectrum spread from the cheapest laptop cooler to the most expensive. Uh, one is $24, one is $28. Some of them have RGB, some of them are more basic. Yeah, one of them I think has a USB hub included. We're gonna look at all the different features. There are links in the description down below. We're gonna start off with comparing some features and specs of the different laptop coolers. Then we're gonna look at uh, unboxing all the coolers, look at what's included in the box for each of them. And then we're gonna establish stock thermal measurements for the Legion 5 Pro. All right, now this is a laptop that does thermal throttle on the Ryzen processor, at least it did last time. We're going to do a Cinebench R23, and we're gonna swap the laptop from each cooler. We're gonna do a stock measurement for Cinebench R23. We're gonna see how much we can get in a, like a five runs in a row consecutive and see how much it thermal throttles. And then we're gonna do each of the thermal coolers and we're also going to measure the fan noise for the laptop stock and then with each of the coolers to see how much of a difference it makes and how loud each of the coolers are um, like can you run it can you run the laptop cooler and quieter at the same time or is it actually going to be a louder overall experience and then whichever laptop cooler wins this cinebench r23 comparison with the ryzen chip we are gonna move on to doing some game testing with Time Spy, Warzone 2, and Dead Space, because both of those are very CPU heavy, which are gonna likely thermal throttle. They did thermal throttle during the initial unboxing review. And then we're gonna move into a final summary of is it actually worth messing with laptop coolers or not? Honestly, I don't have that much experience with them because usually I just run it without a laptop cooler. So this is gonna be a very experimental and interesting live stream test for me today. The Legion 5 Pro laptop certainly could, is a good candidate for it. Like, look at this. This is the original live stream unboxing. You can see 101 degrees on the CPU in dead space at 71 watts of power. And so we're going to see in dead space, can we get um, lower temperatures or like to prevent this 101 degrees? And then how much wattage? Maybe we can go a higher amount of wattage or get more performance at the same temperatures. So right here in Warzone 2, you can see we're hitting so 90 degrees Celsius. Not thermal throttling, but not great on the temperatures either. This laptop list, I just wanna make sure you guys know, this has been updated. Tons of new deals are out today on here. Uh, but I just wanna point that out. There's a link in the description to this laptop link. Uh, laptop ranked list and you can click on these and see benchmarks and see links on where you can buy these laptops as well as well as photos and video reviews. Here we go. The IETZ the -E GT500. This is the most expensive big bad boy that we're going to be testing today. It's got like this uh, vacuum suction thing. You put the laptop right on here. It sucks air through the laptop and out the back, I believe. It's got some RGB lighting around the outside as well as a USB hub here. So K-Ben, up to 15.6 inch laptops. We've got a 16 inch laptop, but it's technically basically the right size. We've got dual fans in here. We also have a little phone holster stand and it says it has two USB ports, but this one's only 1298. We have the Langstar uh, laptop cooling pad. This has six fans in it. It's got legs that prop it up, got multiple switches. It looks like it has some LED lights in it. I'm curious to see how that is. This costs $27.99. And this one looks like it has a ton of RGB on it. I don't know how good the RGB is. The pictures make the RGB look really good, but maybe the RGB in practice is actually really crappy. Just know that there are links in the description to this. All of them are right here with us today. We'll be testing with, with the Legion uh, Pro 5, Legion Pro 5 with the Ryzen 7 7745HX and RTX 4060. And we'll just flip the GPU overclock button on. From here, we're not gonna mess with the Lenovo Vantage, okay? So we're gonna be in performance mode, GPU overclock, we're gonna let default fans run. We're doing 101 degrees nonstop thermal throttling. Most of the cores are in the high 80s, but like two of them are at 99. Three of them are in the low 90s. So basically I think we have a kind of semi uneven pace job here because two of the cores are getting extra hot. Pull right now doing 76 watts of power through the, G through the CPU on average for our package power. We're gonna start with the cheapest one. Cabin notebook cooler, fans with lights, USB X2, anti-skid stick, 
You gotta have an anti-skid stick on your laptop cooler. Otherwise it's a trash. Um, Multi-angle, that is pretty cool. Low noise, according to this. Um, but this thing's only 12 bucks, 12.99. I mean, that is so cheap. That's what it looks like. Looks pretty well designed. Like all mesh along the top here. The bottom has some nice rubber feet here, or I guess kind of foam feet. A lot of airflow can go through here. Oh, and this stand pops up and has little slats in the back here. So you can pretty, it looks like you can pretty easily and reliably tilt the laptop to whatever angle you want it to be. If you want it to be tilted more aggressively or less aggressively or just more flat. But I'm guessing you want to do at least angle one is what I'm thinking if you want to maximize your airflow. Lifetime warranty card, all right? Wow, it's a lifetime warranty here. If you find any shortage of the product, please contact us via email. But if you have defective or bad quality when you receive it, let, us, let them know. And there's the support email. We got one USB-A to USB-A cable. And then this, I believe, just goes right into this slot right there. I mean, I suppose that'll hold most phones. It's not bad, I guess. I mean, I'm guessing we can plug it in right here. Ooh, we've got lights. Wow, it is pretty quiet, actually. There is a little bit of airflow going through here. This, this little knob right here is an adjustable knob. You can make it faster or slower or turn it off. 74.3 uh, three watts, 101 degrees, 4.61 on the core clock, okay? So that's our defaults. Feels pretty sturdy on there. I mean, it's kind of a, li a little bit wobbly, maybe. All right, the cooler's going, I can hear it going. Our stock score, out of the box, 17,149. We are already at 100 degrees Celsius. Let's let it go for uh, at least five minutes and we're gonna see what it averages down to after a while. Let's go ahead and unbox our next laptop cooler while we're doing that. Next up is the Langstar laptop cooling pad. This has games equipment, business office, Wi-Fi, wind speed regulation, wind speed regulation, folks. Light regulation, silent, strong cooling. Ooh, this one's bigger. This one has a wider base. Ooh, this one's got nice blue trims to it. This one has six fans. You can see uh, the back has a lot of ventilation. The front has a lot of ventilation. This one's definitely designed for larger laptops. Doesn't look as secure of a design compared to the, uh, the first one we did. You pop those feet out, very nice. Looks like we get a braided USB cable attack that comes with it. Two knobs back here. One likely is gonna be for our RGB and one's gonna be for our fans. And then we got one USB-A pass-through. I like that the K-Bond has more adjustment in terms of how vertical it gets, but this one is bigger. I feel like it has a wider base and it would definitely be bigger for a larger laptop, more like the Blade 18 or something like that. So this, this doubles as a phone holder right here in front. Not a very good one. These knobs, one knob controls three of the fans, the other knob controls the other three fans. So they do not control the lights and the fans individually. It's it's one knob is three fans, but the other knob is the other fans. You need to turn, I don't know why they could have all just done it on one switch. That doesn't make any sense. Okay, so the K-Bon does 52.7 decibels approximately of total fan noise between the laptop and the laptop cooler going on at the same time at maximum velocity or, or whatever you want to call it. We are averaging 4.69 gigahertz. So that's about 90 megahertz more. So 0.1 gigahertz gain in terms of all core clock speed. Temperatures are roughly the same, 100 degrees Celsius nonstop thermal throttling. Power limit currently at 75.6 but the average during the last eight minutes has been 73.8, which is essentially the same, very, very close to the same average. It's like within one watt of each other. Questionable as to whether this one really would be worth it. Our core clock speed being 90 megahertz or whatever faster, that's the biggest difference right now. Oh wait, CPU package power has averaged 79.4. That is more than what we had. That lines up better with what we were hoping to see. 79.1 on average, same temperature, and we averaged our core clock for our core clocks was 
uh, 4.697, which is definitely better. And our, our score also was 500 more, 500 or 400 and something more on the Cinebench R23 score. So we did see a performance improvement. We are turned up to maximum on the fans. We're as tall as the laptop cooler gets, which is, this is not very angled if I'm being honest. This one, I don't even see the name of it. The BM13, Aim, Aim Uzi, Amy Uzi. I don't know how to say it, the Amy Uzi. Once again, we have uh, almost, the, like that looks like the exact same braided cable as the one we're currently testing. Game equipment, business office, wind speed, multi-angle and light regulation. There is light regulation on this laptop cooler as well. All right, so this one definitely has a different design. Laptop cooling pad user manual. It is a one page manual, USB 2.0 ports, colorful lights, colorful lights, anti-slip baffle, back view with multi angles. This one's a little more advanced, honestly. It says to put the laptop cooler on the desktop or table, then put the laptop on it. Insert one head of the USB cable into a USB port. Insert the other head of the USB cable into the USB port of the laptop. And then you turn on the product by adjusting the fan switch. Just get it to start working. Gently press the LED light switch to turn on the colorful LED lights. So maybe there's a separate LED light switch on this one. Big fan, four little fans. Depending on the air intakes of your laptop, if there's an air intakes in the center middle, this one might actually do really well with the big, the big fan here. Little fan exit air holes here. You gotta grab it from right here and you pull it up. There are these little notches that it can go into and the little grooves, you know, you can adjust it to be that angle all the way up and tilted it up to that angle. It feels pretty solid, but the big thing is if you lift this up, it could flop down. All right, so taking a look at the front, we got more leg floppers, laptop baffles. These don't feel that strong, I'm gonna be honest. I think these are gonna break. Yeah, I kind of felt that way with this other one, but honestly, these ones are a little bit stronger. Looks to have one dial and then one button and one USB. There looks to be no USB pass-throughs at all, as far as I can tell. There's our RGB lights. Hey, this one actually looks the coolest out of the ones we've seen so far. Oh, you can adjust the RGB lights. Like there's pulsing and I just turned it on. Oh, when you turn on these fans, these ones turn off. If you don't have the thing going, these lights turn off. This button is just for this light and the ring lights around it. Uh, three presses, looks like it gets it to be solid, steady, flashing. And looking around, you got RGB going around. It's just one color lights going all the way around. 55 decibels with the Ilang. Let's go and take a look at our performance numbers. So once again, thermal throttling right at 100. 4.718 for our core clock speed average, which is the highest we've seen. Our CPU package power doing 80.3, 80 80.4 for our average package power. That is a new record for our performance. 4.718. Uh, so this is now about six watts of increased performance over the stock wattage and more than 1.1 gigahertz increase to speed. I really like to see that. We're actually getting performance improvement. 4.716, 101 degrees, 80.37 for our core wattage average. 17,804. The score just keeps creeping upwards. It's not bad. It's not as flashy though as, as the Amuzi. It's work, it seems to be working fine. It's obviously big enough. It doesn't also have the same angling capacities as the other two so far, which is kind of a downside. I feel like this one's a little bit overpriced for what you're getting. The Amuzi, let's go. So the Amuzi looks the coolest, I would say for sure, out of all the ones. And it's got the most angle functionality. My biggest concern with build quality with the Amuzi is these feet seem a little thin, a little bit flimsy right here. This one and the Langstar both had uh, kind of weaker plastic feet. Honestly, the K-Bond had better feet for catching the laptop. This one also does not have a place to put your phone. So that's kind of another downside for the Amuzi. They focus more on the RGB lighting on this one. Um, and the RGB lighting does look kind of cool. I'm not gonna lie. It's kind of a cool looking RGB implementation overall. IETS GT500. So this one is the uh, most expensive laptop cooler. Appears to have a USB-C connection with three USB-A hub. So you can use it as kind of a docking thing as well. It's also very large. It's the largest box out of all of them. So we'll have to see how that affects things. I can definitely instantly tell build quality on this one feels more sturdy without a doubt. And the, like the foam here is just really awesome to feel. USB, USB-A 
to USB-C connector. I'm guessing this is what you connect to the laptop. We have a power adapter, whoa. So this one's not just powered through USB-A. You're gonna actually need to plug this sucker in. Now this foam pad, I'm not sure why there's a secondary foam pad. It's kind of interesting. All, it can all come up. So you could replace this if you need to. There are magnets on the bottom of this. Magnets here all the way around. You're probably gonna wanna keep this on there to improve the airflow, like the airflow seal around the laptop. You're probably gonna wanna keep the secondary one in there too, unless you have a very small laptop, like the G14. You probably wanna use this secondary thing. But the idea is you want the outside edges of the laptop to sink into this memory foam. And this is memory foam. It feels very comfy, cushy. You definitely don't want your air intakes to be blocked by this memory foam. That's probably one of the most important things I'll say. We've got one fan. This is all about functionality over form or style for sure. One big fan here, how to use sealed foam if your laptop is 15 to 17 point inches, 17, 15 to 17 point three inches. You need to only use large sealed foam if your laptop is 13 to 14 inches. You need to combine two foams to use. So yeah, basically smaller laptops you use the inner seal as well. Otherwise you just use the outer foam for your bigger laptop. Yes, so these can come out and go lower or higher. I wanna mention these feel really solid. I don't think these little metal clips right here, these little laptop holders are gonna break. I think it's gonna be just fine. Also, you can kind of extend these out a little bit. So if you have a big laptop that's thick along the bottom, you can you can get it in there and it'll hold it just fine. We actually have a air filter, removable air filter. So you can help keep the dust out of your laptop. We've got laptop feet right there. And then this, oh, these combine together to make your feet angled up. They can go really tall, they can go really shallow, or it can go all the way out to just be a little bit up in the air or very steep. Uh, along this left side, we have our USB controller, DC in power button, RGB lighting, motor speed button along this side, three USB-A outs, so you can use keyboard and mouse plugins here as a USB hub and our USB-C in. Your data throughput won't be very good through those ports, but that won't matter for your peripherals like keyboard and mouse. But we need to go ahead and get into seeing the results on the AMUZI. 53.2, 52.3 for the Kaven. The, so far, the cheapest one has been the quietest one. Let's take a look at our performance levels with the AMUZI. So this is the $24 AMUZI laptop cooling pad. We are doing 4.69 gigahertz across all cores on average. Our package power is 79.5, also not quite as high. So far, the Langstar has been the best performance with it. Makes sense because this, this Amuzi has a central fan. It's, it's really like not as optimal for the Legion, sorry, the Legion 5 Pro, which is what we're using here because the intakes are on the sides and if you have a central fan, it's just not as good. 4.696 for our clock speed on our core clock, 100 degrees Celsius once again, and our power was 79.6 watts of power, which is the second most, I believe. Overall, pretty good. Again, seeing some improvement to our performance. To plug this in, we're gonna move this over here to plug it in on the left side. Plugging it in right here, press the power button. Oh, that's loud. Wow. But wow, I can feel the air moving much more than the other coolers. So this is sucking air into the in from the back and out here. So it's gonna push air into the bottom of the laptop, essentially is what it's gonna do. Essentially aiding the stock fans. We were at maximum power throughput. That is minimum power throughput. I think it's completely, it's gonna completely stop. Oh yeah, so it, there it finally stopped. So you can take it all the way down to nothing if you slide the slider all the way down. I'm trying to add just like 10% there, just moved it just a little bit. And you can hear it, it's pretty quiet when it's only at like 20, 10 to 20% right now. Pretty quiet. So this is uh, probably 60% speed. This sucker is loud. I'm hoping the memory foam will help quiet things down a lot. Okay, maybe that was more like 80%. All right, and let's take a look at what these buttons do. So um, M, these lights are arch going around this device right here. I'm guessing M stands for mode. We got red lights creeping around it right now. Press it again, now it's flashing purple. 
lights, blue lights. I guess it's going through the colors. Now it's going to slowly go through all the colors it looks like, going from red to orange right now. Okay, now it just jumped over to purple. Press it again, let's see if anything happens. Okay, so red light going, lights going around the outside. There's a lot of different color modes here, wow. The original color looks pretty good. It's like a nice, smooth, gradual transition of color for RGB, which does look pretty decent and fairly vibrant. I'm not gonna lie, it doesn't look bad. M is here on the left, S with a power button, and C over here on the right. So let's try S with a power button. I guess that's speed. Yeah, that's speed, so you can make it go faster. You can make the lights go faster, that's cool. Uh, C. I'm not sure what C is doing. C doesn't seem to be doing anything. Interesting, well, it's not really color locking. I like the overall design of this. A nice quality feel in the sense that I feel like five years from now, this thing will still be around. I don't really feel that way for the other ones as much. So you don't even need to use the USB-C plug here if you don't want to use the power ports here, but we should try at least hooking up my mouse through the power port or through that, through that hookup. It seals on here really well. The entire laptop does rest entirely on the foam, no problem. One issue that I'm seeing here is the feet here don't stick up enough. The laptop's basically above the feet, so we're gonna have to pull these feet out like that. There we go. I can pull this down. So we are now resting against the legs here. And we are completely sealed around the back and sides. Let's try turning it on now with just the GT500 running. No laptop fans going. So that's with the GT500 at maximum. Let's put the GT500 kind of like at 50% speed. All right, we'll put the GT at just barely on. All right, so the GT right now is is barely on. So you could definitely, like this actually has a wide range of audio levels that it can do. Uh, the question mark is if you run it quietly, how much does it really help? It does get louder when you lift the laptop off. I mean, I would say it probably still helps a little, you know, at least a, at least a bit when it's on low. Obviously running it on maximum is the way to go if you wanna have maximum performance and temperatures. Let's blast it on max and see what the performance is like. You know, you honestly don't even really need to have uh, these leg things do much. Like it's not even touching right now. There's a gap here and the memory foam is just holding the laptop just fine by itself, so. Wow, nice. Feels very sturdy overall. But you can see we've got an air seal all the way around the laptop. Okay, right here at the beginning, we're doing 99 watts of power. Let's see how, how well this thing can sustain the performance level. 85 watts of power. Oh man. So this is an additional five watts of power above the other laptop coolers so far in this initial test. 65.3 is a, extremely loud. Like the MSI GT77 was about this loud basically. Averaging 83.5 watts so far for our entire 10 minute run, 100 degrees Celsius, 4.755 for our clock speed on the Ryzen chip. So we're pulling just without doing anything else, no additional tweaking, no undervolting, we're pulling quite a bit more performance out of that Ryzen chip going from 4.5 uh, six one right as the stock clearly this GT 77 is the the most efficient in terms of pushing the most amount of air into the laptop bottom right our flat on table results was 4.622 megahertz on all cores we did 99 like basically 100 degrees non-stop 73.7 watts of power for our core package power average through the 10 minute period of time. Our Cabin, the, the $13 laptop cooler, got us to 4.697 gigahertz, almost to 4.7. We're also doing 79 watts of power with the $13 laptop cooler. Certainly a noticeable improvement, you know, jumping between these 73.7, versus 79.5, so that's 5.5 watts of power increase. 
during the Cinebench R23 time spy test, or Cinebench R23 test. Illin Star or L Star, this is the $28 one. We got 4.716. Obviously, improved performance even a little bit more, getting us to over 80 watts of power. A Muzi got us 4.696, so about 80 megahertz increase. We got 79.6 watts of power, so very similar to the Cabin. And the GT500 got us 4.75 gigahertz, which is a 1.3 gigahertz increase. Our uh, package power was 83. 83 versus 73, so 9.3 watts increase with the GT70, uh, the GT500. IETS GT500, I don't know how you say it. So that's impressive. So this this cooler clearly wins in terms of most air pushed in. It wins from the perspective it's gonna keep dust out of your laptop because you have the additional air cooler or air filter and in the back. I love that. So right now we're 2560 by 1600. Let's just pop everything up to ray tracing ultra, quality, frame generation is enabled. All right, so we'll give you a ride. everything's on ultra, ray tracing is enabled, Marcus, frame generation is turned on. We're getting 82 FPS right now in this section. We're live streaming at the same time. This is not really a valid test necessarily, but look at our CPU. We are doing 97 degrees, 96 degrees, 100 degrees. On that, that's our temperatures right there, 82, 64. The GT500 is now turned on. Oh, we can hear it. See if the temperatures come down at all. So our temperatures went from like 82 down to 77 on the CPU. Our GPU temps went from, what was it, 63 to 61 right now. Very similar levels of wattage going through the CPU and GPU. The temperature went from 83 on the CPU down to 74, right? 75. Four degrees cooler on the GPU so far. You'd have to do an average to get a, a more precise number, but it looks to be in the six to eight degrees cooler on the CPU and three degrees cooler on the GPU. So uh, we're ready to do some gaming tests with the Legion 5 Pro. And we're gonna compare it with the stuff, the, the tests I had out of the box. Right now we're doing 107 watts. We're doing 57, 58 degrees, 60 degrees on the CPU. So both the CPU and the GPU right now are under 58, 59. This is the, this is the stock temps right here in the same section, 65, 69. So we're getting noticeably less temperatures. Looks like about eight, like anywhere from six to 10 degrees drop in temps. 57 degrees on the GPU right now, 59 on the CPU. And I would assume that we're gonna have some noticeably lower levels of, uh, like basically I think the other laptop coolers, like the $13 one, we're gonna see improvement, but not as much improvement as with this GT500. Right now, 59. 59.65 and if I go ahead and switch over you can see 65.73 for a very similar area this is the, the flat like raised up on a table with no laptop cooler all right going back to this is the GT500 again 59 degrees 66 for the CPU so yeah definitely improving our temperatures Without a doubt, 91 degrees. This is with the laptop cooler, 80, 82, 83 watts, 96, 95. We never hit 100 degrees in that short burst. Here is the uh, on the table option here. This is on the table running right now. 95 degrees, 73 watts, 80 watts, 99 degrees 100 degrees without the laptop cooler definitely made a difference we were starting to thermal throttle there without the laptop cooler so this is going to be the stock score uh well this is the gpu overclock score with the built-in oc 10880 11605 with our cooler we got 10974 and then 11692 not much of a boost to the cpu 
But I think if we kept the CPU test running for longer, we would see a bigger difference. Um, because it's only a short burst, it doesn't really give it a chance to thermal throttle much, really, at all there. Ultra with DLSS on quality, that's our standard. Right out of the gate, our temps are so much better. 88 degrees, 87 degrees. Notice the GPU is also 58 degrees. Very cool GPU right now. Also notice the CPU wattage doing 67 watts right now. I think it'll be pulling about the same amount of wattage overall. No laptop cooler doing 64 degrees on the GPU, 96 on the CPU right now. Notice the wattage, 62 watts, 95, 66, 64, 95, 62, 66. What we're seeing here is thermal throttling is what we're seeing. Um, you know, it's kind of bouncing off that thermal threshold, reducing the wattage, I believe, by a little bit. I don't know, maybe not, but I, I think the I think the CPU wants to pull a little bit more wattage. 101 degrees here without a laptop cooling pad. GPU is at 63, 64, really more, more like 64. 102 on the CPU right now and 70 to 73 watts. Here we are, the GT500 with the laptop cooler. 58 degrees on the GPU, 91 on the CPU, but we're not in the exact same settings, right? So we're gonna walk across here, QHD resolution, then we're gonna switch it to full HD and walk back, and that's exactly what we did before. Um, in this scenario, before we were going down to 62 watts pretty frequently, on that CPU, notice that we're, I feel like we're keeping our wattage up a little bit higher on that CPU, a little bit more often, and our clock speed on the CPU is also over five gigahertz. I don't think it was above five gigahertz um, before. I think it was like 4.8 or something. 93 degrees on the CPU, but we're not getting close to thermal throttling and it's maintaining non-thermal throttle, right? That's the key here one more okay so we're in the exact same resolution now and wow it really slams that cpu holy schmoly look at that 73 watts 96 degrees 97 degrees those are spicy temps but it's not 102 it's five degrees cooler keeping us off of permanent thermal throttle here this laptop cooler is Three-ish watts less of performance to the CPU. Well, it depends on the situation, it depends on the time, but it seems like it's averaging at least two. Two to three watts less. But most importantly, we're not hitting the 100 degree mark. This is, this is the stock scenario. Five, four to five degrees cooler on the GPU. Three to four, five degrees cooler on the CPU. And the clock speed appears to be a little bit faster with the laptop cooler because we're not thermal throttling. I would say that's a win for laptop coolers, but not by a, a huge amount. Obviously, I think there are, uh, I feel like you could repaste this CPU maybe and get better performance or just power limit the CPU down a little bit more. So we're at 2560 by 1600. We should be on minimum settings, DLSS enabled with quality, textures are set to high we are 55 degrees 78 degrees on the cpu 77 on the cpu 56 watts on the cpu let's start running 103 fps on average i did start the average again at the beginning of this little rundown here run through 102 fps 69 for our one percent lows very nice wow i'm pretty sure the temps on this are a lot better but let's we got to compare Let's see here. Okay, so 55 degrees, 76 degrees. Let's pull up our fresh comparison here. With no laptop cooler, we're getting 68 degrees to the GPU, 91 to the CPU, 61 watts of power right now to the CPU, 109, 107 FPS. Interesting. So it was pulling a little bit higher wattage in certain ways. Uh, on the CPU and getting a little bit more FPS, but uh, the temps, wow, 90 degrees on the CPU down to 76. 66 degrees, 90, going to, now this is with the IETS GT500 cooler, 53 degrees, 75 degrees in the same section, very close to the same section of the map.
What a massive difference in temps. I do see that we're pulling less wattage to the CPU for some reason. I don't know why. Our actual FPS seems to be very similar. Maybe it's just, just a hair lower. But our temps are just like awesome now. Our temps before were like really bad. But wow, the temps. 55 degrees, 77 degrees. And again, going back to this was our, our temps before. 66 and 90. 11 degrees better on the GPU. 15 degrees better on the CPU in Warzone 2. A bigger difference than what we saw in any other, any of the other scenarios or games or anything like that. So let's do a summary wrap up of everything we found out. The biggest feature about the Caven is that it's cheaper. It's cheapest one, 13 bucks. It does have a USB in and out. And so it has a little USB hub. Didn't test that, but you got tilt on that cheap one. Not very good for big laptops though. I wouldn't probably get bigger than a 16 inch laptop on that cabin. If you got a 17 or 18 inch, you're gonna wanna go with one of the other coolers, including potentially the GT500. Now the big difference between the IATS GT500, you got better RGB lighting. It's, it's fully tiltable. You got the memory foam going around it. Air filter, pushing in only clean dust-free air into your laptop. That's awesome. You get less dust in it. You don't have to clean the laptop as often. You got the USB, USB A to USB C hub. Didn't work for me though. I don't know why. We saw more performance in Cinemage R23, not a massive difference in performance, but it was noticeable. I'm tempted to use this cooler with some of the other laptops to see like when I do an optimization overclocking performance run using the laptop cooler for those types of videos to reduce performance, overclock even further, push the CPU, like if we were thermal throttling with the MSI GT77 without a laptop cooler and then you throw the laptop cooler on there, you're gonna get another five degrees cooler or maybe another five to 10 watts of throughput through the CPU and GPU at the same temperature, that's phenomenal. Like in Cinebench R23, we saw nine watts of increased power to the CPU. Inside of Dead uh, dead Space, we saw like five, five degrees drop in CPU, GPU temps. In Warzone 2, we saw like a 10 degree drop in GPU temps and like a 15 degree drop in CPU temps, though our performance was also a little bit lower and the power limits were a little bit lower, oddly enough, I don't know why but uh, the, the drop in temps were huge, very big drops in temps. This definitely imp impressed me. I think a cheap cooling pad is a benefit. Obviously, I think the, the key thing when you're dealing with these cooling pads is that, like I've not used a cooling pad for years with my laptops and it's never been a problem. Like you don't have to have a cooling pad, but you wanna min max your laptop experience. You wanna get the best bang for your buck, get the most performance and make your laptop last as long as possible. Having a cooling pad like the GT, IATS GT500 with the air filter and the increased airflow, the reduced temperatures, it's gonna allow you to overclock or let, especially if your laptop starts thermal throttling at any point, this will help prevent that from ever happening. Because again, dust, less dust in your system, get cluttering everything up. More consistent airflow, really helping push more air through the laptop, improving your potential performance by at least, I don't know, anywhere from like one to 5%, depending on the game uh, or the task. Uh, maybe even a little more if you're if you're severely thermal throttling, like we were in certain titles or certain things, you might see more or less performance gain, or maybe just the same level of performance, but at lower overall temperatures. And we did see less perform. Uh, we did see lower temps in the Blade 18 when I tested it, but we didn't see any increase to performance with the Blade 18 in Cyberpunk 2077. I think the biggest disappointment for me with the IATS GT500 is that the USB ports were not working. So let's, before we end this, let's see if we can get the ports working on this laptop cooler. Nothing, we're getting no, no connection. Yeah, no connection. I'm not sure what's going on there with the USB plug. Maybe it's only for powering. I'm guessing we've got power in these, but maybe not data throughput. We've got power through the laptop cooler. So we've got power going through them, but just not data going through these ports. Yeah, so in terms of laptop coolers, I would say either go cheap, go with the Kaven, unless you need a bigger laptop cooler, then maybe you could pick a different one. One of the in between ones that were like 25 bucks. Otherwise, I would say just save, if you're gonna, you know, if you got a $3,000 laptop, $2,000 laptop, $1,500 laptop, a $90 laptop cooler that hopefully will last you a long, long time seems worth it. Those are my thoughts on the laptop cooler. Am I gonna use one in the future? Definitely yes for any kind of benchmarking or optimization videos, but for someone who's gonna mainly keep the laptop in one place or when they get home, they're gonna keep it in one place. 
I think for 90 bucks, the GT, the IATS GT500, totally worth the $90 price of entry. And if you're someone who's very sensitive to fan noise, obviously you probably don't want, don't want this laptop cooler. Go with one of the other ones. Like the Cabin was really quiet. You basically, it was uh, 53 decibels, which was almost as loud as the laptop fans are out of the box. So you weren't really hearing the Cabin or the other ones very much. Anyway, that's it for this live stream. I hope you guys found it helpful. Use the links in the description if you want to support me as a content creator, if you can. Signing off. I'll see you in the next one. Brandon out.